Hey guys, my name is Ivan Palacios. I'm a PA in Dallas, Texas. Um, this is where I've been living for the last year. Um, so a little bit about me. I started PA school back in 2018, graduated in 2020 from UTRGV. Um, you know, uh, PA was always the goal. You know, um, there was some, you know, bumps in the road trying to get there. Um, didn't get in my first time or my second time applying to PA school, um, but got in my third time. So um, was super excited about it. Um, and so moved down to the valley and did PA school where you guys are right now. So uh, right now I'm currently in burn medicine. Um, I work at Parkland Burn Center here in Dallas. Uh, you guys might have already covered the burn section um, when you were in your didactic year. So my typical day right now consists of getting to work about 5.30, 5.45. Um, we normally get sign out about 6 a.m. from the overnight resident. Um, sign out typically consists of just hearing about any changes that happened overnight with patients, things to look forward you know, to during the day, um, or if you know we got a new admit kind of, um, we get report on them. And then we'll typically do a chart check, you know, review vital signs, review labs, um, follow up on if any of the consulting teams dropped a note regarding their recommendations, if we consulted them the day previous. Um, then we start rounds by 7 a.m. So we'll try to see patients uh, before we round or we'll see them during rounds. Um, but typically we'll finish rounds about 8, 8.30 and we will you know, write progress notes on patients, uh, see them during the day when they go to wound care. Um, since it's a burn service, um, all our patients go to a dedicated burn uh, wound care area. So we'll go look at them, evaluate their wounds, see how they're healing, determine the wound care for the day, as in what topical ointments to apply for that day. Um, and then, you know, normally I sometimes get to go down to the OR whenever we do some grafting or we get to use a product called a resell. Um, the attendings will let us know if they need our help. So um, I'm inpatient, you know, on the floor. I get to manage ICU and acute care, and I also get to go down to the OR. And sometimes I cover the outpatient clinic. Um, if one of my colleagues who normally covers the clinic is out on vacation. Um, so, you know, I get a big, you know, variation uh, day to day on what I get to do, which is nice. Uh, so it's never the same thing. Uh, you know, there's certain things that have to be done every day, um, but I kind of get to choose on, uh, you know, if I want to go down to the OR, if I think it's an interesting case, um, you know, I just tell the attending, hey, like, is it cool if I come down? And they're always more than happy to have one of the PAs come help them. Uh, so that's my typical day. So one interesting case that I have seen. Um, so right now we have a patient, a gentleman who he had burns, you know, about 20% of his body um, was doing really well. And we were about to discharge him to inpatient rehab when suddenly he had a decline in his pulmonary status. Um, typically, you know, we'll see some pulmonary issues with our burn patients, you know, a pneumonia, um, some volume overload if they're in the initial stages of their fluid resuscitation. But what made this one different and I guess interesting for me was um, this gentleman has really no cardiac history, uh, was doing really well. His burns are healing really nicely. And suddenly he regressed in terms of his pulmonary status, you know, requiring high flow nasal cannula. And um, some things that I've learned with his case is uh, we use a lot of opioids um, 
for our burn patients for their pain control. And uh, one of the leading etiologies right now that our pulmonology team thinks is uh, the amount of opioids that he was getting uh, somehow caused a uh, pulmonary-like reaction for him. So there's, you know, there's still no concrete uh, source of his pulmonary status, but he is doing better. Um, so this case was interesting, both in the fact that, you know, you always have to kind of really evaluate a patient, make sure that you're not missing anything. You know, we reviewed everything that he was taking, you know, ruled out any infectious process. Chest x-rays don't show any consolidations that it could be a pneumonia. Um, so he did have some bilateral pitting edema, which we thought was maybe, you know, cardiogenic, uh, given maybe possibly volume overload. Um, but that one's been a really interesting case for me right now. And there's still probably more to learn with that one when I come back to work. So what is the first thing you purchased with your PA income? Um, I really don't remember now, to be honest. I started working about February 2021, which was about two months after I graduated. Um, I would say, you know, probably being able to just go out with friends and not really worry about it. I feel like when you're in school, you know, you worry about your financials and, you know, not spending more than what you have, you know, to live off of. So I think that was kind of nice. I know I've done a couple of trips since I graduated. Uh, I went to Washington DC twice now and San Francisco uh, and also Florida. So it's been nice to be able to travel um, now that, you know, working professional I would say the most gratifying thing about my job would definitely be to help people in their worst moments. Um, working on a burn unit, I feel like I, I really focus on, does this patient understand what we're doing and why? Um, and, you know, making sure that their family members uh, also get their questions answered. It's really important that a family member, you know, also knows why we're doing certain things because the family member is an ally in giving care for your patients because they're going to be at the bedside, you know, the 23 hours that you're not able to be there. Um, so I think helping people, making sure that we clarify anything with patients, making sure that, you know, they don't get upset with the medical team. Um, and at the end of the day, making sure that we address any of their concerns, whether it's just reassurance uh, by saying, this is what we're doing and why, uh, do you have any questions? Um, I think that's what I really love about my job. Um, and as a PA on the medical team, um, we have residents, we have attendings, uh, our attendings switch out every week. The residents switch out every month because I work at a teaching hospital that um, I get told frequently from the nurses, um, the techs, that we, the PAs, are the glue of the team, that we kind of know what's happening on the unit, and we always make sure things get done. And so I would say that, um, you know, being, uh, knowing that I'm a value on the team is what I really like about my job. So a bit of advice that I would give a current PA student, I would definitely say that take advantage of your clinical hours that you're getting right now. You know, if there's anything that you, you know, want to practice, this is where you're going to practice it. Um, you know, you're never going to be exposed to the population of patients that you're currently being exposed to in your clinical rotations. And I know that you guys are tired. Some days can be really long. 
Um, but trust me, the time is gonna fly by. You're gonna be studying for your pants after you graduate in December. So take advantage of it. I mean, you're really, I know, I know there's things that you, you feel like you might be missing out on. Um, I know for me, you know, missing out on family events, um, you know, being able to hang out with friends back home, definitely felt like, you know, you were missing out. Um, but trust me, you're gonna get a lot more time to hang out with family and friends. And um, right now, what you should be focusing on is making sure that you put your best foot forward that maybe you land a job after one of your rotations because the physician was really impressed with you. Um, or, you know, that you just explore um, what you like and what you don't like. So that when you do start applying to jobs, you, you know what you wanna go into. Um, and definitely try to get to where you're going. Even if you have to take a job uh, that you don't really necessarily love, but it's gonna be a stepping stone to give you a little bit of experience before you get hired in the job that you want. Uh, for example, I did about five, six months uh, working in a outpatient um, kind of occupational medicine, uh, sports medicine clinic uh, in the Valley. It, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I got to help patients, but I did realize that I wasn't really um, satisfied with what I was doing, that I preferred more internal medicine, you know, critical care medicine. And so I started applying to jobs while I was working my first job and I landed an interview in Dallas. And here we are a year and a month later, I'm working at the Parkland Burn Center. So uh, I would definitely say uh, your hard work will pay off. I know it doesn't seem like it, you know, uh, right now, but it definitely will and you will look back and be so proud of yourself.